Um, you know, Boyle Heights for many people um, has been kind of equated to the Lower East Side of um, New York. And you know, a lot of people who had come from New York or the Midwest or Canada, you know, who already had established themselves a little bit, came to establish their families here. And I think that's what's really just remarkable is uh, how many families that came through Boyle Heights. 75,000 Jewish families came through Boyle Heights in the first half of the 20th century. One third of the Jewish community of Los Angeles Angeles was located here in Boyle Heights, making it the largest and most important Jewish community west of Chicago. I want to modernize this neighborhood. Well, it talks about the fact that in Boyle Heights, all people lived together during the 1930s and 40s, during the restrictive era of housing. Not only were Hispanics Blacks and Chinese restricted from buying homes in Los Angeles. Jews were as well. I care about tradition! Who's going to step up? Who's going to remember what's happened to our people? And his Yiddish. Boy. He doesn't speak his Yiddish. His booba laughs at him. Even as a young boy, you're Yiddish. Yiddish, mother? You want Yiddish? Yeah. Fine. They tick in their tukas. No. <laughs> The dynamics of the family with the father, the son, have you, I found it um, very natural and very similar to my experience with my father. The similar arguments. No, I have a place to sleep. In la casa. Tienes que hablar en español. Come on, Mama. I love him. I know he's colored. Uh, I didn't realize that it was a Jewish community. I used, there is a store, and it has the Jewish, the Star of David, and I always wondered why. Why it was just there out of nowhere. And when I came here, I realized that it used to be a Jewish community, so it just opened my mind to a whole, you know, a new world of Boyle Heights. Faith and religion took place here in Boyle Heights, whether it took place in a church, in a temple, or synagogue, or just in the home. My experience um, attending a Seder, um, I lived with a Jewish family for several years, and um, I brought my mom to, a, to the, one of the Seder dinners. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was really interesting to me, and I knew that I wanted to have something like that story of a Seder and, a, and the guests being um, a non-Jewish, non and to see what that was all about, because I remembered that experience. The Mount Carmel Missionary Baptist Church was a spiritual gathering for African Americans for many years. My mama and I went to our first Passover Seder that my friend Josh Bernstein invited us to. It was dinner at the Bernsteins. A Jewish dinner. <laughs> this is my favorite holiday. It's about celebrating our collective freedom. Baruch so what we're doing is celebrating the fact that with all the issues of gentrification and the encroachment of the hipsters and the developers coming into this area, that there was a time when we all lived together and we're hoping that we can bring that kind of feeling back and not have the kind of tensions that are, have arisen from saying this belongs to me, this belongs to me, it belonged to all of us. Everybody went to Cantor's, lined with pickle barrels. There were kosher butchers, a bakery, a delicatessen. The aromas were of corned beef, oh. smoked fish, oh. the sounds, the, the, the smells, the taste, the sounds of Eastern European accents in Yiddish. The whole thing was a very visceral experience. We end the show with um, Avinadi and Nagilia with our curtain call. And uh, that just gets the crowd going. Right now, the, the show is scheduled to go until December 16th, the Sunday, December 16th. 